Just nothing you should be bothered with. Well, we're having experts in studio with us who are going to delve into the issue and tell us more about it and whether we should be subscribing to these mobile apps or should we stay away. Our Twitter poll question today is do you think mobile money lending apps are a necessary evil? And your comments are coming in. Some of you are really against it. Some of you are neutral about it. I'm yet to see somebody who is pro mobile money lending apps. And we're going to sample some of those tweets later on. But I'm going to introduce your some of our two of our guests we are having Peter Murai the CEO for Okolea International mobile lending app on my uh, right and then further we are having Ken Gidinji the chief economist from Mentoria Economics I hope I said that right Geshinga sorry <laughs> yeah so um, let's start off and uh, with some data we are told that between 2016 and 2019 lending amongst kenyans went up from 10 percent to 30 percent and then we are seeing that also we are having a spike in mobile banking from six percent in 2016 to 10 percent 2019 so i'll start with um ken right here what what came first is it the chicken or the egg is it the mobile apps or is it the lending habit well, thank you and um, good morning. Good morning. Um, for me, I think um, as an economist, yes. we always have to support innovation. Mm -hmm. And if there are two sectors in this economy that have embraced innovation the most, uh, financial services and the media right here. And technology can be disruptive, as you've seen even here in the media. Uh, what the banks did a few years ago, they realized mm -hmm. that we are going to go towards a digital customer base. Yes. Uh, because the demographics support a much younger age. Absolutely. Um, the median age in Kenya is 19 years, and they want to interact more on their mobile phones. So I think the banks picked that up very quickly, and they realized the future of lending will have to be at the convenience of a mobile phone. Yeah, actually, in support of what you're saying, 83% of Kenyans have access to financial services, right? Precisely. What do you think came first, chicken or the egg? I think it's the habit of uh, borrowing from mobile came first. Mm -hmm. uh, when we saw Mshwari mm -hmm. come into the industry yes. and we saw a lot of people just embrace it like that, yeah. I think it goes to the Kenyan culture whereby Kenyans are very quick to adopt innovation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was simply a matter of time that other players in the digital space were going to come mm -hmm. and join the banking badwagon and continue to offer digital credit. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the masses in a much better way than the banks probably could. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and of course there's that fear of being blacklisted by this bigger financial institution, so it feels safer, would you say? Not necessarily because yeah. uh, even digital players nowadays list people, uh, yes, so I don't exactly. think there's an advantage to borrowing from a digital player with a visa bank as mm -hmm. far as blacklisting mm -hmm. is concerned. Yeah. yeah. But okay, Kenya is the third most, um, it's said to be the third uh, in Africa, number three in terms of access to financial loans. But with this access comes a habit of lending. And we're finding on Twitter some of the, the people watching are responding and saying that we should avoid mobile banking. Being someone in the business, what do you think lends to this paranoia? And is it true that these are, are, are actually a gateway into a really bad habit that could lead to financial ruin or is there a way of lending that could actually build somebody so i think the problem is a uh, lack of awareness mm -hmm. remember when we went into lending we went to lending to help people we went yes. to lending to help businesses mm -hmm. we are not getting access to loans from the mainstream banks mm -hmm. we went to lending to avail credit to, to people with emergencies say day or night who cannot access this credit anywhere else. So those people who borrow for the wrong reasons do not borrow simply because we avail the credit. Okay. They would have done it anyway, so long whether even the normal mystery banks provided yeah. such credit. I think we just need better awareness. Yeah. We just need better education so that people know that they need to borrow mm -hmm. for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Simple so that. we are being told that um, by some of our respondents that these are just this is just a capitalistic ploy by venture capitalists to take advantage of poor Kenyans who need money and and so they just give you a loan and then when you see the interest rates it dawns on you that you made a big mistake what do you think about this Ken? well it's a lucrative investment mm -hmm. to be honest mm -hmm. because the average loan rate for most of these lending apps is about 15 percent yeah it's, it's it's true it is lucrative it's lucrative but is so it preying on uh, well it, it really depends so it's lucrative yes uh -huh. uh, but um, if you really think about it what are most people using mm -hmm. um, this um, the money that they're getting from the lending apps mm -hmm. If you're using it to start a business, then it's not really destroying you. Yeah. If you're using it to meet a revenue shortfall, maybe mm -hmm. one of your supplier mm -hmm. uh, made a late payment 
and you need some shortfall mm -hmm. then so it really depends on how you use but you're right if some people are caught up for example in um, betting schemes yeah. and they get caught up it can be a distracted but yeah. in in of itself mm -hmm. is a platform and like any platform it really depends on whether you use it positively mm -hmm. or, or negatively. negatively and there's also talk of people having because this these apps have mushroomed out of nowhere in the past few years we are having tens of them in the market and kenyans are actually spoiled for choice so would you find one person having loans to uh, uh having uh, borrowed from like five apps and of course this is a recipe for disaster so how how is this going to play in the long run for the common mananchi i think the bigger story is why are people are borrowing from these apps uh -huh. is it because um, their salaries are getting delayed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or is it because their business suppliers are paying them late mm -hmm. then they need to fix those bigger problems uh, but if it's for you just normal business use uh, I don't think it's a big thing but to your point mm -hmm. when people have is it really possible to have multiple lending apps because for example if you borrowed from Mshwari yeah. and you defaulted on it yeah. and you are blacklisted it would be very hard for you to to, to, to get it. loan from yeah. KCB mm -hmm. and Pesa. Mm -hmm. So the issue of being tied what to... What if I sit down with my phone and I'll download all the apps and literally get loans 20, 20, 20 from three Is that, apps? Well, it would actually be impossible in the, really? sense, in yeah. the, in the sense that, for example, you mm -hmm. borrowed, let's say you borrowed 10,000 shillings okay. from Mshwari yeah. and you didn't pay and they blacklisted you. Mm. KCB and Pesa mm -hmm. would would not be able to even lend to you because okay. they would reference the CRB yeah. and they'd see that your ID number mm -hmm. has been blacklisted. Yeah. So you'd not even, so, you so the idea of you being like, receiving money from multiple is, is actually yeah. um, more fiction it's, than it's fact. It's than facts. Well, yeah, somebody yeah. has been lying to <laughs> me. <laughs> well, anyway, we're having your responses on Twitter. We have um, Jimmy Malu who says they will mess you up. They should be scrapped out and they need to, uh, to have stringent measures to lend and I fell victim to fraudulent a fraudulent mobile app which I was forced to pay to clear my name in CBR it's a scandal as he was talking about a scandal so do you agree with them is there need for more stringent measures to um, to curb lending apps so I think the problem with the industry is that anybody can just come in and just start lending mm, okay. I saw a study the other day that said there are 49 mobile apps I think the media has been covering this story a lot yes we have industry meetings every other month and yeah. I can tell you as a fact that I'm a player in the industry that we okay. have less than a quarter of those uh, numbers being actually true players mm -hmm. so majority of the players out there are either fake okay. they are fraudulent okay. and those are the people who needs to be controlled I think we need to have better standards mm. as to who we can allow to enter the industry so that we can protect the consumer yeah. More. Yeah. So, so yeah, as somebody who's not very literate, how do I tell the difference between a legit uh, money lending service and somebody that is out to con me or just have these crazy interest rates that will trash my, my, my credit? So for me, what I've seen most of the fraudulent apps out there, what they do is they ask you money up front right. before they actually lend you. Okay. I've seen a lot of uh, apps do that. And when you send the money, mm. You request a loan and the loan never comes. So if you up, see somebody yeah. telling you to send you send the money up front, fee. registration <laughs> fee, yeah. whatever they want to call yeah. it, just yeah. run. Uh, okay, and also yeah. there are these messages that make their way onto your phone uh, asking you if you need money. And yes. it's, it, I think you should just take a look at the whole package. It shows you whether it's true, legit or not. I think just from the, 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 the general view of it. Yeah. And you can call in and tell us what you think um, and just give us your opinion. Be a part of the conversation. Make sure you give us a call tell us what or you can go on Twitter whatever you prefer we'll be here to take your opinions and sample them and just lend to the whole entire conversation now moving forward um, w you will remember that not everyone uh, about 50% of, of Kenyans are said to have been borrowing uh, in 20 of, of the Kenyans who borrowed in 2018 were having a very difficult time in paying back right so we are having people having to borrow to pay a, a loan because they just can't afford it or they, they they took a loan and now they have to sell their assets and go back and pay this is something negative you know so what do you think or as somebody in the business what would you do to ensure that while you're doing your business and you're lending money you're also ensuring uh, looking at the well-being of these people because the goal is not to have people buried in debt so I think the first thing that uh, I've learned being a, a player is that a lot of people are being lent money who mm. cannot afford to pay it back. Yes. So the first thing that all digital players and mobile money lenders need to do is stop lending money to people who cannot afford to 
pay. pay. So KYC here becomes very important. Mm. Don't lend for the sake of just growing your yeah, mm. user base. Mm. Don't lend because simply somebody was able to pay a loan somewhere. Yeah? And we can okay. see this on the CRB okay. record. Okay. So yeah. that's the first thing. Lend only to people mm -hmm. who can afford to pay and who have demonstrated, demonstrated uh, income yeah. where they can be able to, to use this. But I think the biggest cause is whenever there is an economy shock mm -hmm. or the economy is underperforming, mm -hmm. people close jobs. When yeah. people close jobs, they are unable to service their own loans. When people close jobs, people lose employment. Yes. And if you are paying your loans from your salary yeah. before and you lose your job, you are no longer yeah. able. And we have seen this a lot. We talk to our customers who are unable to pay their loans. Mm -hmm. And most of them are telling us, hey, our company is struggling. We are not able, we are not paid on time, so we cannot afford to pay. Or well, I got laid off okay. and I'm not able to yeah. service the yeah. loan. So sometimes it becomes a bit tough because when you do a KYC, yeah. this person has a job. Yeah. Then six but months then, later, this person yeah, has, a, has lost yeah. a job. Yes. And now it becomes a problem because we ask ourselves, if we don't list this person on this basis, then, then perhaps other people yeah. will come claiming yeah. they lost so their job. So what do you do in these instances when you meet somebody who who had a job, was able to pay, but then cannot. How do you handle it? What's the compromise for you? So for us, we have made customer service an integral part of our, of our right. business. So when customers are unable to pay from genuine causes, and they call us, yeah. we negotiate with them probably a restructuring plan for mm -hmm. their loan where we go. Our loans are one month based. So we can, say, we can give you, say, six months. All right. Pay this loan, mm -hmm. clear it. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for us to list you. Yeah. And then one day when you get a job, mm -hmm. give us a call, okay. and perhaps we can continue giving you a okay. loan facility. Right. I think other players need to, mm -hmm. to follow. So instead of listening people quickly mm -hmm. talk to the customer mm -hmm. see how you can structure the loans mm -hmm. so that we you don't have to release people unnecessarily okay and could you even paint us a broader picture on this debt uh, or, or lending or borrowing culture what's happening in Kenya that we need so much of this what is happening that is pushing Kenyans to just borrow and borrow and borrow and it seems like it's not necessarily for business reasons it's not SMEs it, just normal people feel get to a point where they're at the end of the rope and they need to borrow. Is our economy doing that badly? Well, I can tell you as an economist that yeah. we have a cash-starved economy. Our right. uh, money has not been circulating mm. because, first of all, government has not been spending as okay. much as it should. Okay. Number two, the banks, after the interest rate cap was introduced mm. in 2016, our banks stopped lending to SMEs, to small businesses. Yeah. Uh, thirdly, many small businesses um, have laid off, as Peter said, have laid off a lot of people. Yeah. So we're in an economy where liquidity has become very tight yeah. to the point that um, any avenue where somebody can access even a bit of credit, mm -hmm. even to do that weekly or monthly shopping, then that becomes a, a, that, that's, that's the drive. And that's why you saw uh, the likes mm -hmm. of Fuliza. In one month, they were able to lend uh, billions uh, just after their launch. So it tells you, as an economist, we need to think of the bigger issue that's leading to such a uh, credit crunch, yeah. and we need to fix that credit crunch. The government should come up with a stimulus that can lift the economy yeah. so that people uh, start depending on incomes yeah. and not on debt. And just to lend to that, two weeks ago, CS Fred Matiangi said that 500,000 youths had been blacklisted. So this means that we are really having a hard time. Could you tell us your take on that? Absolutely. And yeah. the reason, I'm sure most of them are boring, is many of them are unemployed yeah. or have been laid off, mm -hmm. but still they have obligations mm -hmm. that they have to take offset. Family obligations, mm -hmm. personal obligations. Mm -hmm. So for me, back to the bigger question, mm -hmm. how do we create a more vibrant economy mm -hmm. where we hire these young people, mm -hmm. where we give them good salaries mm -hmm. so they don't have to be so dependent on, on debt. Debt yeah. is not a bad thing. Debt is was supposed to be a stopgap measure. Yeah. But what's happening in Kenya, it's becoming more of a way of life it's a crutch. than, than, than <laughs> a stopgap measure. Yeah, so uh, with the five, have you felt in the business that these numbers, did you see this coming? Half a million youth being blacklisted by CRB. So what I can say from our data is yes, we have seen it. Yeah. You find that out of say, all the loans that we have uh, disbursed over the, our lifetime, mm -hmm. we have close to 35 percent of the people who have borrowed from us is beginning yeah. have defaulted and therefore we have had to, yeah. to list them okay we are talking internally to see whether probably for those very small loans mm -hmm. whether there's a mechanism to which you can be able to remove these people from so the, that yeah. from there from the, but it's, not, it's going to be useless if we do mm -hmm. it if the other players mm -hmm. don't follow suit yeah. and do the same the same yeah. so 35 percent that's quite high so of course 
you are insisting that lo getting loans from these apps are not is not a bad thing. Yes. But so what is the solution? How can people approach borrowing from your apps in a way that will be sustainable? They can pay back even if they don't have jobs. What what are the some of some of the reasons that you would support for people to to borrow? Perhaps maybe is it business? What what should we borrow for? So for me, any person who runs a small business is going to definitely have a cash flow problem. Mm. They are going to, uh, to lack enough capital maybe to add stock to sell to their customers. There are days maybe they are going to have a higher spike okay. in demand. So mm -hmm. those kind of people definitely should come and borrow from us. Mm -hmm. Even if they borrow from two or three players to mm -hmm. meet their capital requirement, mm -hmm. there is no problem there. What we need to stop doing probably is to stop lending money to people with no income. So I see a government role here to step in and create maybe a database where we are able to see clearly yeah. people who have jobs, mm -hmm. people who don't have jobs, but so that we can stop lending to people who have no income. Yeah, but I would beg to, 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 to assert that yeah. government sometimes is not always the solution. Yes. Maybe the private sector. Do you think it is be better private sector than waiting for government to the, the sell this idea? The problem of? happens yeah. in terms of there are so many laws that yeah. govern sharing of data you see okay. I'll give you a very simple example mm. if you want to share credit data with another person you uh -huh. cannot do it directly mm -hmm. you have to go through CRB mm -hmm. to set up a, a company like a CRB to be able to share data among an industry mm -hmm. you need a license from CBK mm -hmm. similar like getting a banking license which is difficult yeah so so long as those kind of laws exist as top companies or okay. individuals to come together and share information freely mm -hmm. then we are still going to need government <laughs> to, to come in yeah those bars from yeah. innovating and mm -hmm. making that possible yeah so the so uh, at Kelly Mboya 99 says, of course, no, many people are now making debts in stupid ways because of lending apps. Like you beg to differ that this is not the reason why people are actually uh, going into debt. And somebody else here, um, Ke Keru Kerun Jagi one says, sure they are. The, the poor have, uh, have found an avenue to leverage their needs. So there's a need that mobile apps are meeting. Um, could you give us an example of that? So, yeah, the problem was every, the reason why so many people have flocked to digital lenders yeah. is because banks will not offer yeah. loans to people without collateral. Mm -hmm. Most poor people, even the guys who are earning a, a decent salary, don't have assets. Mm -hmm. So these people, the only uh, recourse, recourse they have is yeah. to run to digital. Perhaps yes. if banks, mainstream banks, decided to uh, lessen their requirements mm -hmm. for lending, mm -hmm. A lot more people may end up probably going and taking mainstream loans, which are probably cheaper, mm -hmm. and there's probably better KYC okay. there. Okay. But so long as that exists, and he can say that mm. the problem of the economy is banks stop lending to SMEs. Exactly. So even people who do deserve yeah. credit cannot access it mm -hmm. from the mainstream mm -hmm. banks. So the industry will continue to grow mm -hmm. so long as the yeah. mainstream people yeah. refuse to play ball and give money to those who need it. I get you. Now we are being joined by Eugene Miner via phone. He wants to give us some of his opinions on this matter. Eugene Miner, good morning. Good morning. Uh, tell us what you think. Are mobile money lending apps a necessary evil? What is your take on this? When you think about the rampant apps and many available resources and sources, uh, it becomes probably one of the biggest solutions that especially the small man has at their disposal they only need uh, their telephone number email and probably an id number to be able to access some loan of probably uh, a small amount then grow their limit so the mere fact that they are very available to especially the poor man or the sport man uh, they become uh, one of the best solutions because they are fast but now uh, some 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 mobile lending apps have be have also become uh, very witty with what they are doing, eh? because they will they, they will also charge very time. It becomes uh, a very unnecessary evil. Thank you so much, Eugene Miner from Nairobi, giving his sentiments. Well, he has said it's necessary, but he also says that there is a, a bit of a catch when it comes to when you're paying back. It's a bit much. What do you think? Or, or let's go to Ken and then back to you. I didn't quite understand his question. What was yeah. his question? He says mm. that it's necessary, especially for the common man. It right. is necessary to have these lending apps. They are fast. They're in your hands. You, you, you get your money quick and you do whatever you need. But at the same time, some apps 
are taking advantage of people when it comes to paying back yeah it's a bit much it's a bit too expensive for them to pay back so what do you think about that well when i talk to owners of small businesses mm. they tell me that the most important thing for them mm. is a turnaround time yeah to get um, a, a loan facility it's the number two issue is mm. the cost try. of the loan so that's why you used to find banks such mm. as Chase Bank mm. uh, that used to be very popular with entrepreneurs. Yes. The reason it was so popular is because it took a much less time to get the loans out there because cash flow to an SME is very vital. Yes. So the price of the loan becomes a secondary. It's an important thing, but it's more of a secondary objective. The number one objective is the turnaround time. Now, mobile lending have actually cured that where in uh, less than five minutes, you're able to access that money where before you'd have had to go and um, fill in forms and stuff. And, and granted, the amount being given here is quite small, to yes, be honest. Yes. The average is about 3,000 to 5,000 mm -hmm, shillings. So mm -hmm. I think sometimes when people hear mobile lending, they imagine you're being given a million shillings yeah, on your like, phone. But yeah. it's pretty much, I think the industry average mm -hmm. is less than 5,000 mm -hmm. shillings. But when you speak of turnaround time, what's mm -hmm. turn, what, what is good turnaround time to me might not be the same for Mama Boga. That's, you know that's true. yeah so i i mean i struggle to figure out how can they be accommodated well it you might find it it's it's a fair turnaround time but for them it might be really hard because maybe they're making 500 1000 a day so what what can be done by these apps to ensure that they are accommodated there's definitely room for innovation yeah for example with the, i think it was mm. a kcb and pesa mm -hmm. that came up with the product mm -hmm. where if you pay back within 24 hours yeah. then you are charged zero percent yes so i think that touched people the mamambogas of yeah. this world yeah, who yeah, need yeah. Mm -hmm. who need that money mm -hmm. um asap and okay. can pay back asap okay so i think there's still a lot of room of in, for innovation for improvement. yeah exactly. and we'll get into that after we talk to michael muse who's calling us from rongai tell us what you think are mobile lending apps a necessary evil or are they unnecessary good morning okay good morning to you Okay, I think mobile apps sometimes they are reliable and to some extent they are not, uh, they are disadvantaged. Because when you look, for example, the, uh, okay, the teacher, they are listing people in CRB, I think they are disadvantaged, like uh, borrowers who would like to access uh, good terms of cash from the, like, the lending institutions like banks. So if they can work on that policy, I think they maybe they bring on, on board better or friendly terms in which they are going to manage the default time. Because uh, you find like for example the recent report in the case that most of the most of the youth in Kenya have been listed have been listed on CRB by some of these led you mean more by lending arts companies. So if they can be friendlier on the way in which they, uh, they approach that issue, it will be okay. Just for, then, yeah, for the sake of the discussion, could you explain to us if you have had this experience, what in details uh, in details happened to you that made you feel that they are not really fair when it comes to lending? What, what specifically aren't you comfortable with when it comes to money lending apps? Okay, yeah, I have, had, I have had experience with them mm, until it came to a point I stopped it, you borrowing money from them. I borrowed money from my, several of them, but uh, I had some financial difficulties. And then when I tried to explain to these guys to give me quite some time to service their money, these guys couldn't understand the situation, the way it told and then. Um, Listed me on their B, but uh, fortunately, after I paid their loan, they they moved me to their B. Okay. Yeah, but the situation has, 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 has uh, to some point deteriorated my credit rate, and yeah. I'm really struggling to get it up to the level. I mean, in such a way that I can still accept like, loans from other lending funds. That 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 that's the backside of these applications. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you very much. Michael Musay calling us from Rongai area here in Nairobi. I told you there are people who say they've been lending from several apps. I, I don't know. I don't understand how this is happening, but he is faulting the apps for not understanding and also for uh, uh, making him uh, 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 blacklisted, even though he tried and explained. Could you give us, an, uh, because you're in the industry, there are some people who truly, truly face difficulties when they're trying to pay and they are sincere. They're not trying to coin the app or the, the service what would you do for such people so tricks perhaps just to confirm what you say yes a lot of people do borrow from multiple apps yes because we have access to this data mm -hmm. we can see where they are borrowing from mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the problem really why that is happens is that the way the crb or the way data sharing is constructed currently it's mm -hmm. not real time Okay. So you find that most players submit data once a month. Oh, so by right. the time I'm checking today, ah. I could find that you don't Somebody have loans everywhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. But by the time we refresh the data a month later, yeah. you find that you have you borrowed four or five other yeah. loans. A month. So I think uh, the government is doing something with the old bank on this, mm -hmm. and they are changing the way that we submit data so that once it is real time, mm. we can probably stop these multiple borrowing from so many companies. That's yeah. number one. Number two, you need to understand we, we operate in an industry whereby we deal with such big numbers. Mm. Even players like Okolea, we at any given time we are dealing with more than 100,000 mm -hmm. customers at a given time. Yes. So the challenge of then having to yeah. listen to every person who is having yeah, a challenge in loan payment to be able to give them a, a kind of a special deal becomes a challenge. Mm -hmm. Bigger players in the industry probably are dealing with close to a million customers at a time. Got so you. you can imagine the challenge of having to listen to every uh, reason. And yeah. I know there are good reasons mm -hmm. and being able to give them exceptions yeah. to the rules. So, so what would be the solution that. if you could tell us, is it that we need more corporate responsibility, education. What would be the solution to young people so that they don't fall into these pitfalls of lending, like you said, lending apps are not bad, but they need to know what they're lending for and for better reasons. So what would be the solution in your opinion? Well, I think there's a cocktail of solutions. Yeah. Um, I think the first of all, it has to be around education. Mm. People have to realize that loans are reliability. Mm -hmm. They're not an asset. Yes. So people have to realize if I'm borrowing these 10,000 shillings to start my bakery at home, yeah. and this bakery is going to create cakes and pay me back, yeah. then possibly that's a good investment. But if I'm using these 10,000 shillings to bet on if Manu will win the yeah. Champions League tonight, and they lose, <laughs> and I don't have any other way, mm. then so it starts it's with that problem. kind of financial yeah. education, which platforms like this mm -hmm. already are helping to do. Mm -hmm. And number two, I think it's a broader challenge for us economists mm -hmm. to really think, you know, is it time that the mainstream banks started doing the work that they were supposed to do because this credit crunch is coming because we've said banks stopped lending yeah, to, to SMEs. SMEs. Yeah, exactly. And banks had a much mm -hmm. better way because they had your savings. Mm -hmm. They could match what you put in your savings with what they're lending mm -hmm. as opposed to sometimes the apps which don't have a deposit raising yeah. mechanism. So yeah. I think that's a broader issue mm -hmm. that uh, we economists have to think about. But I think for the young people, mm -hmm. it's really to think of, you know, what are my career goals? Yeah. And if I'm borrowing to get a suit that will help me I get to go this. to my interview, yeah. then possibly that's a good thing. It's just a, a way of uh, distinguishing what's a good use of money mm -hmm. and a bad use of money. And even that should be enshrined in the yeah. 844 curriculum. Yeah, I think, I think so. That's a very great point. Our, are our schools preparing these young people for uh, money management? That's another, another thing that needs to be looked into. So internationally, um, Kenya features, especially when you look at Mshwari, M-Pesa, it's hailed across the globe. We have other apps such as Ali pay we have your uh, wechat and all these other applications that lend money but uh, they're very successful so how can we grow I, I know there's room to grow how are we going to grow our own services to ensure that they're as clean cut as some of these renowned um, applications so I think actually the first interesting thing uh, I saw yesterday an article where by one of our digital players yes just got an investment close to 17 billion yeah uh, they play mostly around the Kenyan economy mm. and even the, the other players actually started here in Kenya But mm -hmm. they are now in around five to six markets yes. in around three continents mm -hmm. So we actually the ones who are actually exporting best practices yes. in terms of okay, digital okay, lending okay, okay. to the other cod continents out there So mm. I expect as the, the industry grows, remember we are still very nascent As yes. the industry grows, mm. as we learn more about the trends, mm -hmm. about the lending trends, about the consumer behavior yeah. We are going to improve the way that we offer credit yeah. and I believe in the next coming five years mm. 
uh, we are going to be the one actually setting standards globally setting in terms of digital globally. credit. Wow, yeah. which, which would be a dream because we are doing uh, well already as things are. Now to sample some of your tweets, we are having Jim Rose Mudi who says, no, I don't think so. They are not a necessary evil. They usually help. I'm a student at Chuka University and these apps have been my rescue since last year. They are to help, especially, they are of good help, especially to comrades, e.g. today I have to print my project. I have no money at hand i'll just borrow so you see there are some positive um comments about lending apps and <laughs> some some people just think dude it's just for a meal and you know <laughs> some of our needs are that simple you might be borrowing for a project especially like that student you might be borrowing just for a meal um i'm i'm going back to the issue of smes mm -hmm. i'm really bothered by the fact that banks are not lending to smes because these are the backbone of most local economies and that feeds into the whole general economic picture could you tell us what would it take and why are they not lending to smes and what would it take for them to make that turn around uh, that's been one of the biggest topics, I yeah. think, in economics for the last three years. Mm. Uh, prior to 2016, mm -hmm. um, there was a feeling that banks were charging way too much. They were charging maybe 25%, 28% mm. to, to SMEs. Mm. So one of the proposals that came up at that time was we need to cap um, uh, the rate upon which banks are lending. Yes. And they agreed to 14%. Mm -hmm. And the thinking then was banks now would have to possibly yeah. lower their rates on their loans. Mm -hmm. But what banks eventually end up, end up doing, they say that 14% will mm -hmm. only lend to government because wow. key bills mm -hmm. were 13% and government is considered a very safe mm -hmm. um, investment destination mm -hmm. or will only lend to corporates. Mm -hmm. So that meant all the money that would have been going to SMEs now was being churned to treasury bills, was mm -hmm. going to the big corporates that don't need mm -hmm. the money anyway. So yes. what it ended up creating mm -hmm. was actually a credit crunch mm -hmm. within the SMEs. Ironically, it, what it, it was meant to solve, mm -hmm. it ended up uh, making it even worse. worse yeah. So three years later now, I, I saw the uh, Court of Appeal made a, an opinion on the matter, mm -hmm. and they said it's actually unconstitutional uh, to have that rate cap. Yeah. But they gave Parliament 12 months to, to try and come out. up yeah. with laws mm -hmm. that can support what they are doing. Mm -hmm. So which means right now, as you speak still, uh, you can't get, uh, most banks still will not touch a uh, mm, risky SMEs, SME. Yeah. So what, where do these SMEs have to go? Because they still have to buy suppliers. Yeah. They still have to mm. meet their obligations. Mm -hmm. So many of them now end up in many of these apps or many yeah. of these uh, non-financial, yeah. non non-bank financial institutions, yeah. NBFIs, to get that credit. So what will it mean to resolve it? And yeah. the court has done its part. Okay. Now it's parliament okay. that really has to come up with laws to that's really remove the rate cap and re return us to uh, yeah. where we, were, we once were. Yeah, just to cut you short. We are having Julius Boyd calling in from Capsule Get. Julius, welcome to the show. Tell us what you think. Are lending apps a necessary evil? Mariago. Hello? Hello. Welcome to the show, Julius Boyd from Capsabet. Hello? Hello, tunakusikia. Tuambie. Maoni yako. Huyo jamaa. Ah, we apologize for that issue with transmission i think julius boyd is in is in somewhere is somewhere that is not very well connected but moving on with the discussion talking about smes women are also said to be very good um, at paying back loans and have you witnessed this in your data because they say they, they 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 borrow but because they have a lot they have children they have a lot to lose they're very meticulous in giving back the money Strangely <laughs> enough, we used to think so. Yeah, really? <laughs> we used to. But, uh, now, let's see, using big data analytics to look at our data, yeah. we have higher repayments for men. Oh, really? Women. Mm. But uh, we also found out it's because probably also more men yeah. as compared to women borrow from digital apps. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know. I don't can't know. say whether there's a big difference between the way men and women repay their loans based on the data yeah. we actually have. This was supposed to be a triumph for me in this conversation. <laughs> I'm upset by that. So um, the questions we are asking you today is that, is it necessary for money? Um, is it, are, are money lending apps a necessary evil? And we have had your responses. And at the end of this discussion, we find that 27% of you say no, they are not a necessary evil, while an 
overwhelming 73% still feel that mobile lending apps are a necessary evil. You have the sentiments of our experts right here. And of course, you can, from your, based on your experience and the discussion, you can decide whether or not they are a necessary evil. What do you think, All right, Michael? and uh, well, I was reading somewhere that spend less than you earn. Yeah. So if that money is not coming to bridge any gap that uh, you have yeah. or is not going into any investment, mm -hmm. then uh, I would desist from using it. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a mobile money app, my imagination is that their interests are normally pretty high. I mean, they're out to make this uh, money at the end of the day. Yeah. So really, um, you just put yourself in a position where you can pay it back or yeah. if not, then just you know, live within your means. Yeah. Does that Sound make sense? advice from <laughs> Michael Gitonga. <laughs> yeah. Only what you need. Yeah. Borrow only, only what, what you, you need. need. And I guess for an investment, for a good, don't borrow to eat. <laughs> Which is Somebody what we seem to do as a country. Yeah, it's just for a meal. <laughs> it's for a meal. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. But well, it's that time of the day. It's now 10 minutes to uh, 9 o'clock in time for us to uh, say goodbye. And well, take this opportunity to thank you for watching Morning Express and wish you a fantastic and a productive day. My name is Michael Gitonga. And I am Trix Ingado.